Hello, I want to preface this tutorial by saying that I am having a framework fatigue right now as a front end dev in 2023 going into 2024 because there are so many different front end frameworks like Next.js, Veto, you know, like there's so many static framework today to choose from. So a lot of people are getting fatigued. Uh, I see a lot of comments from Hacker News just about the release of Next js 14 today where they're like hey you guys didn't fix the old problems before you release the new version or they're saying that hey there's a lot of open issues there that no one is fixing so and then some of them are playing tired of next.js moving towards a different direction like from the uh, page-based router into an app-based router and then there are just endless new react.js you know features like react server components that most people just don't really get and even on the presentation today, on the Next.js presentation, they admitted that PHP had it right, right? When you put everything on the, front, on the server side, then, you know, it, it sort of just works. So this made me curious about all of these other alternatives out there. And one of the frameworks that a lot of people have brought up is Astral.js. This framework seems to be very cool. I checked it out a little bit. I read about it. It seems to be very, very good for static content websites but it's capable of building a web applications as well. So I just want to give it a check. Um, so I'm going to see, you know, what can we build with this thing? I just want to follow through to see what's going on. So this will be like my first reaction. Uh, you guys get to follow along as I create this project. Let's see what's going on. So on the website, it says you can use NPM create Astro latest and this will install the CLI to install Astros for you. So here's like, where do we want to create new projects? Let's see, Astro test. Would you like to start your new project, include sample file? Okay, I'll use the, uh, actually I'll do the empty. So I just want to see what the plain template looks like. Install dependencies, yes. So I already like this uh, CLI here. It's very colorful. It has this nice loading spinner. So let's see what it can do for you. It will install all the dependencies. Now note that for Astro to work, you need Node version 18 plus for this to work. So if you have an older version, it's not going to work. Well, while it's installing, let's check out you know the website. It seems like a lot of big companies like Google, Microsoft, NordVPN, Guardian, like all these companies are using it. Um, one thing I read about it is this idea of an island architecture that this uh, this framework uses, which is very, very cool. So basically the TLDR is that when you have a website, sometimes it's a mix of static and dynamic content. For an example of a dynamic content is an image carousel, right? It's dynamic, it shows you know image, it moves around. And then the header is sort of interactive as well. But then you get static contents like the sidebar, which almost never changed, the footer almost never changed. So what they're saying is we have this island architecture. Uh, basically, the server will render the static portion directly on the browser, so uh, on the server. So the browser just gets the output and then render it. But then on this interactive portion, you can hydrate it with a client-side JavaScript. So it's like a hybrid of uh, SPA and a static website. You get the best of both worlds and Astro will do that automatically for you. And then your application can, you know, take advantage of this and render all the static stuff first very fast while the, the interactive stuff is getting loaded. And they, Astro will provide you finer grain control over these as well. So if you, let's say you want the image to really render, don't show the image carousel until it's all done. You can tell that as a directed. So do I plan to write TypeScript? Uh, let's just say yes for now. How strict? It'll be strict TypeScript. Now again, you don't need to write TypeScript. You can just use JavaScript and it should just work. So this will do the TypeScript customization. It seems like I really like it to do it because I don't like to do it by hand because there's a lot of configurations. You got to set up a TypeScript, uh, all the compilation things. So I would rather, you know, skip that. Do I want to init? Nah, not right now. I don't want to do a git right now. Cool. All right, good luck there, astronaut. Seems like we got this whole thing working. And then let's go to CD Astro test. And then uh, npm run dev. 
you know, let's see what this gives us. Theoretically, this should open up a empty website. Oh, actually, it doesn't open for me. Okay, cool. I'll just copy this and then go to localhost 4321. And there it is. This is Astro, right? We have a website going. So looking like, wow, so everything's like server rendered. It's just say Astro there. Pretty nice. All right, so let's get started on a, uh, let's build something, right? So they have this tutorial here. It's pretty cool. I actually went through it a little bit, but I'm gonna do it in this video to show you what we have to do. Now this tutorial is actually very, very nice for total beginners. So if you are, a, you know, if you're like experienced dev for me, you can breeze through it very, very easily. So we already set up all the, the uh, environment and stuff. We launch the setup wizard and then we see this Astro on the screen, right? Let's go to the next. Let's write our first line of test. So let's go to uh, source pages index. So it seems like it seems like uh, it's a route based configuration. So this is very, very similar to Next.js's pages folder, if you're familiar with that. So all of our static pages are here. Oh, actually, there is an extension, right? We should go get the Astro extension. So this will install the uh, extension for us. So we should get some sort of syntax highlighting for .astro files. So if we go to index.astro, there it is. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually highlighted, great. So looking at this, I already see something different, right? You have these squiggly line here, which we will go into next. But here, it's a very basic HTML. You have a uh, standard HTML tag, but here you have something weird, a generator, content astro generator. Let's inspect this generator thing. Let's see what what it uh, what it outputs, right? Let's see generator. So meta name generator content astro 3.14. So this is getting the it's automatically generated. It looks like a variable, right? The squiggly line. If you're familiar with React or any sort of uh, template front end, you know language, this kind should look familiar to you. All right, cool. It seems like this is you know H1 astro. Let's okay, Pentaco, press save. Wow, very fast reload, I like that. So we get the standard, you know, hot reload, all that stuff in there. Uh, let's change Astro test. Cool, the page title also changes. Very cool so far, I like it, very fast. So yeah, they just wanna change this. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna store my thing in repository. So they have the tutorial, you can deploy your website to Netify, which is very cool. It's all hooked up. Now let's check out some uh, changes. Let's uh, create our first Astro page. So let's create a new Astro file. In the first panel, let's create source pages, create an index.astro. All right, let's make a, oh, actually index.astro is already there, right? Uh, I'll create an about.astro. All right, so today we're gonna make an about page, Astro. All right, so what do we do in there? So this will, uh, automatically add the route slash about to your site. So if I go to about, I should see an empty page, right? So it's file-based routing under the pages folder. So this is very good for static websites or blogs and stuff. Cool. Now in the, uh, in the about page, let's put this stuff in, right? In the about page. All right. So if I press refresh, there it is. So you sort of write a static HTML. This should be no surprise to anyone um, who are, you know, familiar with HTML. You're just gonna write HTML. Very cool. Let's add navigation links. Okay, so this is the um, the example of how we're gonna do navigations on the blog. So here I have a home and an about. So if I click on about, it takes me into account home. I go to home. So this is pretty cool. It's automatically understands how to do routing. So if I, if I make a page called about and put a link to slash about, it automatically knows where to put. Now this is very, very familiar to me because you know that's how Next.js does it. Automatically set up the router. So I don't have to worry about the router and stuff, right? Which is super cool. Cool. All right, index. Oh, I had to add it to the top of index. Now, you, if you're an experienced developer, you're probably like, hey man, I don't want to add all of this stuff to the to every page, right? Because it's tiresome. We'll talk about how to do this dynamically later. So let's see. 
page at blog. When did we make a blog, Astro? Edit the page. You should now have a website with three pages linked to each other, assigned to out to the log. Hold on. Oh, here. Okay, this is the step. You gotta add a blog that Astro. So what I like to do is copy, paste, and then just call this blog the Astro. And then uh, I'm gonna put some link in there. I'm gonna just say this is blog. And then I'm gonna add an extra link to it. So this link should, again, this is tiresome. I'm gonna add it to, add it to every page every time I add a new link. But the point is you can now visit all of these pages, right? We have a very simple, sort of like an SPA, but it's actually not. It's actually rendering every page as I go, but it's very, very fast. It's lightning fast. Cool. Now update the blog page with this stuff. Okay, let's go to blog and we're gonna put the, uh, no. This stuff here, Astro Blog. Cool. And then he's like, oh, you're going to publish it to the web? Okay, I'm, not, I'm going to publish it. Now, let's write your first Markdown blog post. So, Astro supports Markdown out of the box. So, it's asking us to create a new directory as source pages posts. Make a folder called posts. And then we make a post1.md inside of this folder. So, post1.md. All right, so this is a Markdown file. Right. So now, if I go to if I go to uh, this one post one, it should link me to that post page, right? Awesome. Now this page, you know, this is, uh, now okay. So now I had to put something in there. Let me copy paste this whole thing into my post one .js .md. Oh, there it is. Look, it's rendering, right? My first post published on blah blah blah. Now you do notice some things up here. That's not standard markdown. I don't think, I haven't seen anything like that, but that seems like a tag. Maybe it is standard markdown, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But here I am installing, I mean, I'm writing all this stuff. So I'm, I guess these are uh, social tags, like OG tags, like when you, let's say, share the link on a Twitter or Facebook, it will display it correctly. Anyway, this is cool. Here I'm just writing markdown and I'm able to write my first blog post. Very cool. Now I can link to other posts inside my blog post. Okay, so in the blog section, so let's go to the blog section. I can link to this blog post just by doing a standard href, right? To post, post one. So .md is not needed at the end, and this will take me to the post. So if I go to the post, this post one, I click on it. There it is. It takes me to the post. Awesome. So it seems like the routing so far is super, super cool. This seems like uh, very, very easy to do, right? So let me, uh, it's asking me to make two more blog posts. So here's blog post two, which is post two. And then I'm gonna paste this whole thing. And then here's asking me to do post three. So this, you know, you can very easily write your own post just by doing static files. You don't have to write like a new page or something. So now I should have three posts in there. Um, oh, sorry, I gotta link it from my post, right? Go to the block section, let's go to the block section and then link it. Cool, now I have three posts. I can click on them, very nice. Okay, got my posts ready. So if you, if you ever, all you wanna do is block, this should be good enough for you. But sometimes I wanna do dynamic stuff, right? I wanna add a, uh, a navigation or something. So let's open up the about astro, which is here. So what is this? This is what we have, right? So add the fine line of JavaScript in the formatter between the fences. So this is the secret, right? You can actually add JavaScript to uh, to your, oh, actually, let me change the about to this. You can actually add JavaScript to your .astro file just by doing this. So this is standard JavaScript. I had to put it in between the three dashes. So this is how they distinguish between JavaScript and uh, HTML. So that astro file, if I do, uh, if I make a variable called page title and with a value about me, I can now use it inside of my HTML. So it automatically hooks that up. So instead of saying title, you know, I just do title page title. Um, 
and then I'm gonna change this h1 to also page title so this will reference actually no dollar sign because I'm so used to doing dollar sign page title right this will replace this value with the about me so if I go to the about section you see it still says about me right even though I'm putting this as a, as a variable it's simply replacing the value here so now you have a dynamic content this is how you do dynamic content it's pretty cool right and this is how you write JavaScript so if you in the you know let's so it's asking me to make write some more JavaScript inside of the uh, the fences is what they call it so I have identity and then skills so and then in the about we're just gonna let's let's put that here let me paste it first and then you you'll see um, you see what this is let me explain to you so this is very simple you have a variable again identity that first name so the identity is referencing identity here identity the first name so it should be Sarah right and then identity uh, country occupation so same type of thing you can actually write straight up JavaScript if you're a react developer this should be very very familiar to you it's actually the same exact syntax you go to identities hobbies length if it's greater than two then you say two of my hobbies are one and two my skills are and here you're doing the map function right you're just creating for each skill type out the li with the name of the skill you're just mapping it this is very very familiar if you are a reactive over as you can see it's rendering out all of this stuff so this is how you do dynamic content it's very very cool you can also do conditional rendering so if you have a let's say I have you know one let's add a couple more variables happy finish goal and then you know in the about section let's add some more to it so up to here so what this is this is like familiar, familiar syntax this is saying if happy is true then render this stuff if you're finished then render this stuff if your goal has three then render this stuff otherwise say my goal is not three days so yeah you see this is very very cool very very cool this is how you do uh, dynamic content and now let's add some styling to our site so in the about page you see that this is standard HTML so you know just like the standard HTML you can put the styles in the style tag so right below title we'll put some styles and then you go to about me and boom you get styling this is HTML this is not thing special there's no magic behind it right so you know it, and then if you want to add some styling fine so the list of skills here I, instead of saying a lot I'll just say class skill so this will look at the skill CSS class and apply the style to it this is again it's using class equal right if you react you know we ask you to use class name equal but now this is class equal now I'm just gonna add a styling to the define a style for skill and this should make the color green right so yeah there's it all your skills are green this is cool right now we could do CSS variables as well so you know it got a skill color instead of green I want to make it dynamic let's say you know I derive this value skill color navy as something dynamic you can add a variable like this so this is something the first part that I'm kind of wary about because this syntax here is kind of weird it says define bar skill color I haven't looked into that much yet but um, but this is a CSS variable to syntax so the color you know you do this now the color is dynamic it should be blue or navy so it's pretty cool but I have to explore this more so if you want to add like global style sheet to this you can do so we source styles and then you do uh, global.css so this is like a global CSS style again this is not SAS or anything you're just writing a standard HTML uh, CSS right so here I added a global CSS and then I in the about page I'm just gonna import it this is like the ES6 style right in the, uh, the, the, the the import style that you should be familiar with if you're writing modern JavaScript now I'm just referencing this styles folder and then global and there it is look at this my blog post is now stylish pretty cool right so the next all right let's do components 
So remember, I was like, hey, I don't want to write this. Uh, I don't want to go on every page. I want. I don't want to write this navigation thing because if I add a new section, I have to update all of these pages with the navigation. So let's add something new to it. Let's make a new components folder, and then let's call it navigation astro. All right, cool. Source component. So this is exactly how I would lay out my my files if I were to create my own framework. So so far, I'm very very happy with this uh, organization, navigation astro, and then what's inside? Uh, let's put this stuff inside, right? Remember, I'm just putting the navigation inside, and then here's the part where you can write the JavaScript. But I don't have any JavaScript right now. Um, so that's it. That's all there is to the navigation component. Now I just need to import it, right? Go to import. So in the index page, right, this is the home page. Home page. And in the JavaScript section, I'm going to import the navigation component. And now, instead of, uh, you know, Oh snap! I forgot to put the navigation. Okay, so it, it used to be you know you have three links, right? So I'm just gonna put it here. Um, navigation. So this shit looks like JSX. It looks exactly like JSX actually. It is. Yeah, <laughs> I think they inspired. They were inspired by JSX. So if I go to the homepage right now, look. Right, I got the. Uh, wait, what did my. Uh, is that the oh yeah there's that thing okay I'm gonna delete this navigation right I'm just gonna put here so now I have my navigation up here right cool see now I have a reusable reusable component so now all I'm gonna do is copy this thing it's a blog page right I'm gonna put the import this thing and then I'm gonna Reference it. Going to show the navigation. Now I only have to do this once on a, when I'm on a new page, and you know I don't have to. Let's uh, copy this line. I see I like to put all my imports up here, and then copy this line, and then I'm going to put my navigation up here. You can put it anywhere. I'm um, just I don't care. So now I have a navigation about, so I, oh, oh yeah, I should remove this. Okay, I'll move it down here. Remove those manual navigations and then put the navigation here. So now I'm just replacing it. Now every page should have a navigation, right? Yeah, so they all have navigations now, and it's all from one component. So if I want to update this navigation, say, Hey man, I'm gonna post it here, and now every page will say "Hey man," right? Dynamically, I don't have to go to every page and update it. I just update it in one place. Cool, awesome, awesome. And now let me uh, update something with my, you know, we we added a global styling to the about page. But I want to add it to all the pages, so I'm gonna import the style here. And then in the blog post, I'm gonna import that style as well. So now my page should look pretty cool. Nice. Oh, in the blog page, I wanna move my navigation all the way up. So I'm gonna do it here. Look at that. Beautiful, I have a blog post, guys. That was fast, I love it. Love it. I love this framework so far. Okay, create social media footer. Okay, I'm not gonna do it, but you know, it's the same idea. You create a footer component, and then you put the social media on the bottom. Uh, put a header. Okay. All right, I'm not going to go too far, but this is like a first quick intro to Astro.js. You can feel free to go into this page and follow the tutorial around. But I, we made a blog post very quickly, and it loads extremely fast. Gotta say, I really like the syntax so far. So to recap, you know, I kind of like this approach of putting, you know, CSS, uh, uh, JS in between here, and then you can, you know, import CSS and all this stuff. Just write your JavaScript here, and then reference that stuff right over here. So this is kind of like similar to Vue, I guess, but this is like, I love it. I, I like it so far. So let me know what you think about Astro. Try it out, and uh, you know. If you have any comments or any suggestions for me to try out, let me know in the comments. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Please remember to subscribe.